Hey, welcome to this video. This is a little video I'm going to call Schlossberg Reset Studies. And it's going to be the first of a few, I think, because I've got a few. And what I mean by reset studies is sometimes with my play and maybe with your playing as well, um, you find everything feels a little bit funky. You know, it's like chops don't work, maybe the head's not engaged, breathing feels out, your sound doesn't feel like your sound, anything, you know, just kind of get in the way of trumpet playing. So there's a few things you can do. You can put the trumpet away and not play for a day. Maybe you don't have that opportunity. Yeah, because we're all working ones right now, aren't we? Um, but maybe, you know, it's like when, when, when things are normal, obviously you, you do have a regular gig, etc. that type of thing. So rest is still a really, really good thing. Letting the body um, just kind of reset by itself. Always making sure you got plenty of water. Mr. Jordan Hoffman just reminded me of this in a video that he said that he posted in February. Check out Jordan's channel. Amazing stuff on there. Ridiculous player. So water will really, really help us. Being dehydrated can really, really mess with our bodies, regardless of being a trumpet player or not. But when you think about the water content of our bodies, how hot we can get when we're playing, the amount of water we expel through our air as well, etc. In terms of heat and condensation. You know, so we need to keep ourselves hydrated. So, make sure you drink regularly. If you're not into a huge big gulp, sip constantly. My mum told me that as well. Thanks, mum. So, when it comes to trumpet resetting, trumpets don't have a reset switch. The best reset switch you can give your trumpet is give it a clean. So that's the other thing. If your trumpet playing just isn't going great, give it a clean. It's amazing the stuff that comes out. Mine is definitely due for a clean. I've been a little bit neglecting. I know how because my third valve is like my little flag that goes up and says, I need a clean. I'm getting sticky. Because it catches all the gunk that comes out of the lead pipe. Goes right into there as well. Okay, so everything gets kind of man manky. So in terms of the playing reset, the playing reset for me goes back to the video that I've just posted up about getting my chops back together and having a maintenance practice routine. Some of these exercises I've already talked about, but some of them I haven't, and I've not really gone in depth with them a lot. So on top of like the usual um, lip flapping, um, lead pipe buzzing, all that type of stuff, which I, I believe really, really should be a foundation. There's about um, three or four, maybe five steps to getting the sound and everything happening here. Check out my videos on super quick warm up, um, starting your sound and note bending techniques, I think it is. Um, I'll link them all in this video, but they're all on the channel. So having all that sort of stuff in place is a good a good reason. And just going back to having a break from trumpet playing, when even not warmed up, you know, it's like we should pretty much, maybe just with a little bit of a lip flap, we should be able to put a trumpet on our face and just be able to blow a G. And you know, it comes out without any air crackle whatsoever. If that's not happening, then think about taking a rest if you can. Obviously try and drink your water. Maybe take a little bit longer to warm up if you must play. But more than anything, just spend some time just trying to get that feeling back in your own mature. And it may very well be that you do just need to take a break and rest and think about all the things that, you know, might be going wrong. There might be nothing. You might, your face just might be tired. Or your brain might be tired, which is quite often a good reason in my case so moving on to the um the reset exercises um i've spoken about yeah the the, the warm-up process schlossberg exercise 13 okay exercise 5 was a really really good one as well a anything at that first part of schlossberg is is gold the whole book's gold put it that way i know i'm not on a commission so exercise 13 exercise 14 and then I think is it 15 or 16 they were all part of the previous videos I've done and a big part of my playing so 
if everything is starting to kind of feel okay, you know, and maybe there's nothing wrong with your chops, maybe you're just coming back into after an extended period of, of a rest and you want to build back into strength and, and articulation, etc. Then there's some exercises in here that have really, really, really resounded with me. All about keeping the air nice and flowing, trying to think about things like gentle interval work, just all the things that you'd expose yourself to in a tough gig or even just putting the trumpet on your face for anything. So the first one that I'm going to do today is it's on page eight, it's 31 and it's quite a long, quite a long study. Um, you only gives you four bars and then you're supposed to know the rest of it. It's a se sequential pattern, it's quite straightforward. And it says very slow and soft. So a sub 60 beats per minute tempo is what I'm talking here. And if you're using the right amount of air and not forgetting our support, then that shouldn't be a problem. And what I like to do is I like to try and get it through the exercise as far as possible, okay? And then when I know I comfortably can't play anymore, I don't push the air out of me, I'll take a beat or two for a break, a proper breath, and then carry on. So this is what the first part of exercise 31, page eight, in Sloshberg's Daily Drills sounds like. Very slow and soft. Jobs are feeling today has been it's been a long, 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 long day. So that's pretty much it. That's the kind of approach that I've taken to that study. If you think I've got it wrong or I can modify it, let me know in the comments. Um, always interested to, 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 to hear your points on, on these studies. So that one there, so if we talk about the notes, goes G up to the C and then down to the C. So to not talk about the notes goes five one, then octave one down. And that's the way that the first of every group in terms of what's gonna happen next happens. So the next one around, it kind of flips the attitude. So instead of going like middle, high, low, we start kind of middly low, then low and then high. So we start on an E for the next one, but the main thing here is that the, the, the large interval goes from low to high as opposed to high to low. Okay. <laughs> So I'd be misremembering there. So that's it. Now the exercise or the study progresses up. So we just use the different harmonics um, until we get up to the last section where we're an octave where we started. We're octave an octave above. So we go G, top C, down to C, etc., all the way down chromatically until we get to our F sharp. And the second half of that exercise is this one. <laughs> there may be an edit coming.
So that exercise there, you know, it's, it's quite a taxing exercise. There's a lot in it. That's why I didn't do the whole thing. So in terms of thinking about the resets that we can do to get our plane back in line, you know, we still have to think about, if we're coming from, like, say, a period of just rest, so the trumpet's been away, maybe been on holiday, whatever, you know, you just maybe couldn't get the trumpet on your face for as much as you wanted to, or you're coming from a period of injury, whatever it is, you're basically, you're coming at these exercises from not your regular strong place. What you want to try and bear in mind is your rest periods, you know, and thinking, I'm going to get through this whole exercise. You know, I never really got through this whole exercise in its entirety when I first started getting the slush bear, getting into the slush bear book for quite a while. I could go through maybe what I was doing, that type of exercise, but going up to the G and trying to have it nice and clean. Now, you probably heard there, I don't know how well the microphones are picking up, but they're getting a little bit crackly. Certainly in the beginning, going up to the C, etc you know so i mean i know i'm not in a strong place and if i had done the full exercise properly breaking would have been a really really important thing so each of the sections you got just ascending seven notes okay so uh, g f sharp f e e flat d c sharp okay so that's where we go down to in terms of the first section now between these seconds you, you can take a break and it is a good idea to break as much as you play but this exercise in its entirety, you know, you could do this as your one chunk of practice for 20 minutes or whatever, and then have 20 minutes off. Even though if you're resting within the period of, of each one of the little sections within this, this exercise, getting away from the trumpet for another half an hour or however long you have to, it's important, you know, really until you're strong enough to get maybe all the way through this exercise in one go, rest or any of these exercises is really, really important. Because if we're coming back to reset our plane, we don't want to be doing damage, you know. We want to be reasserting our foundations in our plane. So, the next one on this page, similar type of vein, slightly more musical and a little bit more direction. So, this is exercise 32 on page 8. And we have a passage in 3-4. So, he's even given us a, a tempo and an dante. So, it's not, not too fast. Certainly, anywhere, I suppose, between, geez, right about 100, 110, usually where I am. And the instructions are, you've got an A line and a B, or a articulations, rather. So A is three notes legato. I'll explain this more in a wee second. And B is all legato. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bars. Each of the bars has got three crotchets. The three crotchets are all tied together. And then you tongue the start of the next bar, etc. So da da, etc. Okay. But when we get through that line, you can either do the whole exercise like that and then have a break and then come back, or you can do the whole line fully slurred as one whole legato phrase. When everything's working well for me, I just usually do the A and the B back to back. Don't have to, it's entirely up to you. Sure, someone could argue that out for me if you want. But always remembering rest is important. So the other thing to remember about this, and he's actually got it stated here um, with the musical direction, Dolce. So trying to think about this as sweet as possible. You're trying to think about a lovely, nice singing melodic line. So we'll see what comes out at the end of my trumpet today. And you can leave a comment to tell me if you think it's particularly Dolce or not. So what I'll do is I'll do the first line, which is our C. It goes up to the C, uh, high C. Finishes in our bottom C, and I'll do phrasing A, and I'll do phrasing B. And I won't take too much of a break between them. Normally, I would. So here we go.
Yeah, second one was definitely a lot cleaner. So, in terms of, again, making sure that we're strong enough to play these exercises and use them, etc., it's quite an important thing. So I've obviously still got a little bit of work to go, but, you know, I'm not gigging just now. That's not an excuse, but in terms of knowing these exercises here, know that I get benefit from them, and hopefully sharing that with you, it's a good thing. So, throughout the rest of the book, there are some other exercises, and I like to modify them and change them. There's actually, there's a, um, there's a trumpet player, I'm trying to, I can't remember his name, we'll try and find it, and he has revised the Sloshberg with a whole, um, a whole bunch, not all of them, but a whole bunch of exercises that he's modified. Um, so he'll maybe take them higher or he'll change an articulation or he'll extend um, a phrase and do something else with it um, and I've had a look at it once and there's some f f fantastic stuff in there as well um, so with that in mind on page 33 sorry page 9 lesson 33 there's another interval exercise very similar just to where we were, but this goes up to an E flat. So we're looking at our extended register. Now, it's almost identical to 32, but it goes up chromatically. It starts on C, then C sharp, then it runs up to E flat. So in my mind, that's saying fill in the blanks and see what else you can do. So this is where, and I said, and Dante again, maybe, I don't know, I remember Dante's a little bit out. But anyway, so this is how this exercise sounds. So this is 33 on page 9. <laughs> actually do the same with that as a well with 32 so to the full line slurred as well not entirely sure how loud it's coming across but certainly not blowing really really hard so in line with like a lot of the Maggio type work as well that I'm a huge fan of making sure that we can place these notes and slur these notes there are some horrendous slurs out there written for pieces of music written in pieces of music for trumpet so this is where a lot of the good work comes in. So skipping on a little bit, uh, two lines, we have our E flat one, okay? It's the exact same phrase, it's just written a little bit higher. And this is where having the metronome going is really, really good because it forces you to, or forces us, me, to really try and play these intervals in time. Get everything working, boom, 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 like that, you know? Tapping the foot's a really, really good way. That engages everything and really helps tie everything together. So here we go for E flat. A little bit squirrely, but that's the impression. That's the idea of it anyway. So why not? You know, it's like work on your transposition skills. So the next easier one to be would be change the key signature in E flat and turn it into E major. <clears throat> now you're just doing just like imagine the key signature is there or take it up like a full tone to A. So that's how you can really get a lot out of these Schlossberg exercises and any exercise. But in terms of going back to what I talked about with the resets, exposing your practice to where you're comfortable playing, where you're supposed to be playing, so your range your ability, your, sorry, your ability to, to play fluently, etc, etc, etc. You know, there's a whole world of exercises out there. So the one thing we mustn't remember, mustn't forget to do, rather, is to play tunes, you know, try and get that side of our head going as well. And in the grand scheme of things, you're going to know you're playing better more than anything else. I really enjoy doing these exercises a lot purely because I'm familiar with them and I know that they can tick a lot of the boxes very, very quickly. So there'll be other exercises coming, there'll be other videos coming. This was a little delve into Schlossberg. There's more to come. 
Um, and I hope this wasn't too boring because I know I talk a lot and I should be doing more playing. I should be doing more playing anyway. That's very evident. But again, I hope you really, really enjoyed this video. I'm trying to get a lot of content up there. Um, and if you do like this video, please share it. Please share the channel. Let people know that there's lots of us out here doing this. And, and I go and look at a lot of other trumpet players videos, etc. I mentioned Jordan Hoffman just earlier on. Um, you know, going and looking at, at his things, our good friend of mine, Tristan Button. There's loads and loads and loads of guys out there from all over the world. So get out there, practice, research your trumpet playing, listen to trumpet playing, listen to your own trumpet playing, listen to other music, you know, just really, really enjoy any extra time that you've got to get stuck into the music. Hit the like button, bell icon, etc. And I shall see you next time. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.